This is the day the Lord has made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. My name is Colleen McFarland. I'm the interim pastor here at Union First um, Presbyterian Church in Collinsville. Welcome to worship with us today. A few announcements for you. Um, first of all, our, our prayers go out to uh, Dorothy Buzzard's family on her passing this week, and we pray that God will be with them. Also, an anticipated announcement, the session held a special meeting this week, social distancing at the pavilion, to discuss having in-person worship. It was decided and voted on that we would be in the sanctuary Sunday morning, uh, June 21st at 10 o'clock summertime. Uh, we'll be asking folks to maintain social distancing between families uh, and to wear masks. You will be getting a letter in the mail uh, explaining details in full, but it will be good to, to gather again safely. Um, we will continue to do our online service. We're still working out the details and how that is going to happen, but stay tuned. Um, another announcement, we have been noticing that through your generosity that um, some folks are leaving items for the food pantry, that they're leaving them on the ground underneath. And there's a concern because when we have weather that moves in, labels are being... Um, destroyed because of the rain. Uh, there's a concern about uh, maybe children who are not supervised getting into cleaning products. So we're asking that if you could please just put items into the food pantry itself and not set them down below, that would be good uh, until we can decide uh, how we're going to do it. But we uh, so thankful for your generosity and people are using the pantry, so that, that's good news. Um, and lastly, but not leastly, thank you for your continued support of our church. We are very grateful, and you are truly a blessing to us. Would you join me for worship? From our call to worship, adapted from Psalm 8. Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in the earth. Your glory is set in the heavens. When we consider the work of your hands, the moon and the stars, how is it that you care for us? Yet you put all living things under our control. Lord, oh Lord, how majestic is your name in all of the earth. Let us pray. O oh God of mystery, and yet is known as love and community, grant us the grace to accept the mystery of your, of your being and to accept the gift of our being forever united in you and with all your creatures through your love. And yet, even though we know this truth, we often fail to live up to it in our daily lives. Forgive us our foolish ways and call us back to you. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, we pray. Amen. Friends, God's grace is unlimited by time or space. We are bound to him by his love, his love for us. And in the name of Jesus Christ, we are all forgiven. Amen. Our passage for today, I'm going to focus on 2 Corinthians chapter 13, verses 14, or I'm sorry, verses 11 through 14. Hear the word of the Lord. Finally, brothers and sisters, rejoice. Strive for full restoration, encouraging one another. Be of one mind, live at peace, and the God of love and peace be with you. Greet one another with a holy kiss. All God's people here send their greetings. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you all. Thus ends the reading of our Lord. You know, today is Trinity Sunday, and that's a weird concept for us to understand, even for us adults. So um, 
Jeffrey's here with me. I, I think maybe you can see the tops of his ears a little bit, but um, he's here and Jeffrey brought something today, an apple, a red juicy apple. Now he and I were talking and although it's not real simple to explain, the Trinity is kind of like the apple. I like red apples. Some people like green apples. But the apple has three parts. There's the outside. In this case, it's red. And then there's the crunchy inside. It's kind of cream colored. And sometimes it's sweet and sometimes it's tart, especially if they have green apple, that can be tart. And then at the very middle, I don't know if you can see it, there's a little stem right there. And that's connected to the core of the apple. And in there are the seeds. So the apple has the skin and then the cream colored inside and then the seeds connected to the stem. Now the outside protects the apple and helps it grow. The inside's yummy. And the seeds, well, that's how the apple can grow and make other apples. It's kind of like God. We have God the Father, and then we have God the Son, Jesus, and then we have the Holy Spirit. And yeah, that's kind of the seeds, kind of like the apple. Now, this is called an analogy, and it, it's not real easy to understand, but it helps us a little bit. And Jeffrey really wanted to eat the apple, but I told him we needed to wait till after we talked to the boys and girls. So um, think of the apple and the different parts of the apple and how that helps us to maybe understand God a little bit better. Can we pray? Let's pray. Lord God, we thank you for who you are. We thank you that you created the world. We thank you for your son, Jesus, who loved us and who died for us. And we thank you for the Holy Spirit who guides us each day. Lord, we ask your blessings upon the children and protect them and guide them. In the name of your son, Jesus, we pray. Amen. Okay, I'm going to sit Jeffrey back here with his apple. Tom Long, who is an author and a theologian, was asked to speak informally at a family service. Now, the idea of the service was that they would gather in a social hall and they would have tables of ingredients for making bread. And as he preached and talked, the families would put together the ingredients to make bread. And then the bread would break, bake. And at the end of the service, they would conclude with having the Lord's Supper and eating the bread that they had all made. Well, you know what they say about best laid plans. The ovens couldn't take the the quantity of bread to bake, so it took way longer than anticipated. The children had a little too much fun with flour going here and there and everywhere. It was a mess. By the time the bread was done and ready to eat, everybody's patience was just to the breaking point. And Tom Long had a very eloquent benediction that he was going to deliver to the people, but instead, he closed with these words, the peace of the Lord Jesus Christ be with you all. Now think of this. He's looking out into total chaos. And from the back of the room, a small child's voice could be heard saying, it already is. Friends, life is messy. It's filled with unexpected twists and turns. Flour or worse gets spilled everywhere. Things just don't go as planned. As I was reading and preparing for today's message, 
it kind of seems like our whole world is like this right now. It's hard to know what to think or what to do. We've had the worst pandemic in a hundred years and a man dies unjustly while in custody of the police who were supposed to protect us. These two events together with the resulting emotional and social and economic impacts has caused incredible fallout in our society. People are frightened, they're frustrated, they're angry, and they're confused. How do we respond? What do we do? Who do we listen to? When I encounter things like this, I like to go back to the beginning. So in Genesis chapter one, God created the world and said that it was good. In verse 26, he said, let us create man in our image. Now, God didn't need expert advice. He wasn't talking to himself. He was communicating with Jesus and the Holy Spirit. They were all there together. The three of them, what we know as the Trinity, together with great love and community and communication amongst each other with great admiration. But by the beginning of chapter three, sin has entered into the world and we have been battling it ever since. Sin is like that flower that went everywhere. It makes things difficult and even dangerous sometimes. But just as often, God is right there in the middle of the whole thing. Just as the child acknowledged in Mr. Or Reverend Long's story, even in the failed bread making, God is there. Now in Matthew 28, verses 16 through 20, what we know is the Great Commission. It opens up with 11 disciples on the mountaintop with Jesus. They worshiped him, and then it says some doubted. But Jesus continues, and he tells them to go out into all nations, to baptize and to teach them in the name of the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit. There's the Trinity again. Now, the church often uses this passage as a rallying cry for evangelism or for mission to, to reach out with the teachings of Jesus. And that's good. But I'm intrigued by verse 17. And I'll read it again. They saw him, they worshiped him, but some doubted. Jesus knew that there were doubts, but he continued on with the commission to go out and to reach others. Now he didn't say, okay, now you three stay here and we'll talk some more, but the rest of you go. No, that's not the way it happened. We know that there were disagreements in the early church. We know they didn't always agree. But we also know that the world changed because of the results of these faithful disciples. Even in the midst of the doubt and the confusion, God worked mightily. In 2 Corinthians, Paul's closing remarks to his letters to the church at Corinth. Now, I think if we listen in, we can gain some insight into what's going on in our world today. We know the church at Corinth was a mess. They had acted ungodly towards each other. It's a wonder Paul just didn't say, forget it, you're never gonna get it, I'm out of here. And just walk away, but he didn't. At times he was very stern with them. And it was because he wanted them to understand that God loved them, God died for them. But their behavior and their tolerance of sin amongst them was going to have severe consequences. It was very messy. His words say, strive for full restoration. Do the hard work of listening and try to understand 
and love others. Do not ignore the needs of others. We are all here by God's grace. All have sinned and fallen short of the glory that God intends. By God's grace, it continues to th flow through him, through Jesus, at the direction of the Holy Spirit in our lives. That happens when we reach out towards others, not because they deserve it, but because we didn't deserve it. And yet God still died for us. And that grace, it's available every day, all day. God, or I'm sorry, Jesus is God's grace with skin on. Remember in the beginning, Emmanuel, God with us. Jesus became human and stepped down into hurt, into pain, into this human world in a way he never had before. He died so that we wouldn't have to face eternal consequences. By God's grace and power and love, the cross happened to him instead of us. Christianity is the only religion where the God we worshiped died for us because of his love for us. Other gods had to be appeased by humans and they never knew if they'd done enough or done it right. There was a great uncertainty based on, did you perform the right way? That's not the case with Christianity. Throughout his letters to the church, Paul uses this word koinonia in the Greek. We translate it generally as love. But this particular word means partnership or, or fellowship or a sharing, a joining together for a joint thing. The church at Corinth struggled mightily with this. And as we look around today, the same thing's happening. But God is still at work. He didn't quit. He's still creating and reaching out in love to the world and the creation that is his. Jesus died so that we might have eternal life. Even if right now things are a mess, the Holy Spirit is with us in our midst, even now, even though we can't see his presence. And we know because God said, I will never leave you. I will never forsake you. We need to strive for that restoration. And it's not going to be easy. Things are messy. Paul goes on and says, encourage one another. Be partners. And remember that differences may not be all that big a deal to God. Be of one mind. What's the most important thing? I think Jesus told us, love your Lord, your God, with all your heart and all your mind and all your soul and all your strength and love others as yourself. That's what Jesus said. Live in peace. We're not God. But if we trust in him and if we reach out not in condemnation, not in fear, but if we reach out in koinonia, in fellowship, in trying to work together to make things better, God is already there. He will help us. He will show us the way through the mess by the guidance of his Holy Spirit who came through Jesus Christ who now intercedes on our behalf with the Father. They're together with this power of love that we cannot imagine. And that power is for us through the Holy Spirit. 
Let us pray. Holy God, who in great mystery is the Father and the Son and the Holy Spirit, we worship you. You are beyond our ways of understanding, and yet you desire a relationship with us. Your love and communication with the Son and the Spirit are beyond us. And we're so grateful that desire, that you desire us to become a part of that love. Lord God, heal our world. It is a mess. We continue by our words and our actions to hurt one another. Give us insight into how we can live together in peace. Grant wisdom like that of Solomon to the leaders of our government at all levels. Protect those who are innocent and help us to see others with your eyes of love. Be with those who struggle unfairly because their skin is different or they haven't been given the same opportunities. Oh God, be with those who are ill and those who are burdened. We remember Dorothy's family and ask that you would comfort them. Lord, also be with the Tar family as they continue to grieve. Be with Tom and Midge's daughter, Laurie. Be with Jan, Jer Gary and Phyllis, Jesse, Joanne and Russell, Dick and the Macaulays. And Lord, those names that we don't know, but you know them. Lord, grant your healing presence and strength for this journey. For try as we might, we often fail. Lord God, speak to our hearts and help us to have the courage to step out in koinonia to one another. We close our prayer with the prayer our Lord taught the disciples. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our debts as we forgive our debtors. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever. Amen. And now, friends, hear these words, simple ones, from the Apostle Paul. May the grace of the Lord Jesus Christ and the love of God and the fellowship of the Holy Spirit be with you now and forever. And know that he is. Amen.